in my no, okay no. but this she's a wonderful dj and a wonderful cook and husband and yeah. all, i mean wife. just a wife. wife there you go i mean to her husband there you know. hello got dj D red dj there red <laughs> just a family affair and then we got the consultant here tonight as you're going to introduce the consultant because he says he's multi he is known as now known as the music cultural anthropologist. In other words, in other words, known as Robert A. Yes, <laughs> the consultant for me. <laughs> well, number one, we excited today. So, by definition, being a, uh, a a music cultural anthropologist means that you know the roots of the music, and this brother is deep. He he ain't the roots. He the roots, uh, twelve and fifteen feet deep. Yeah, and the yeah. tree. Yeah, as they and, say. And, and you know how you look at somebody and you look at their background and, 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 and see who they've worked with? Mm -hmm. This here, proper mispronunciation, this here brother, been worked with everybody. So I'm really excited to talk to him and been one of my favorites for a long time. Long time, man. Long and time. I'm glad we made it happen. And he got new music out too, we're going to share tonight. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about new music like just released last Friday. Absolutely. So, but before we get started, we want to thank our sponsors every week for making the show happen. That's right, Bell Navis Spirits. That's right, go to bellnavisspirits.com. Get this fine bottle of wine. Like I said, I give you your money back. You can find me here on We Love Red Grooves. If you purchase it, it's a great, great bottle of wine. Hey, it's a great first date wine. I gave it to somebody for a date, and my man said, it almost got me to the house. So, but Bell Navis. <laughs> but, yes. but, but may I add one thing? Yes. If you appreciate quality wine. Yes, quality uh, wine. You know, my entry point was... T.J. Swan. Boone's Farm and T.J. Swan, so Manischewitz. There you go. My appreciation then would not be... No, I did not drink <laughs> that. Uh, but anyways, I'm saying I know and love and appreciate a good wine, and this is one. Yes, you do, and you wait every Tuesday. I'm not just you think that you don't get it. Every Tuesday, I ain't gonna drink it till Tuesday. But without further ado, we want to get the show started, man. Because I, I, look, I've been listening to the music for the last week, and I am just so thrilled that we bring into the Groove Studio a jazz, soul, funk musician, mm -hmm. pianist on the forefront of what we call jazz fusion. He's a, a pianist, organist, composer. He's played with so many great artists, but I mean. He could go back to Art Blakely and the Messengers. Yeah. Miles Davis. Huh? Farrell Saunders. Yeah. Stanley Turrentine. Right. Betty Carter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My girl. He, he even, my girl Phyllis Hyman. Yes. Yes, yes. without a and, doubt. And don't forget John Coltrane. John yes. Coltrane. Do I have McCoy Tyner. Yes. You don't get no better than that. Yes. And, and, and Miles Davis. There you go. And after all that, he went in and formed his own oh, band yeah. Yeah. called the Cosmic Echoes. And they recorded albums widely regarded as classics in fusion, smooth jazz, acid jazz genre all over, man. And I can't say no more. I'm just happy to welcome to the Groove Studios the one and only Mr. Lonnie Liston Smith. That's right. Do I say it? Lonnie Liston Smith. Welcome to the Groove Studios, my good man, all the way from the VA. All right, Cliff, it's great to be here. It's, it, isn't it a wonderful thing, man, that we can still have this conversation about your music? and still share your flowers with you tonight, man. And I know you've um, done many interviews over the years, but we are honored that you grace in our studios tonight to tell the story and how we tell the story is with the music. Okay. Great. All right. Right. So we're going to go down into the groove graveyard, into the greats, and we're going to all take, we're going to take them on a journey from the beginning till now. I mean, like you said, you got new music that's just being released. But before we talk about that, as we do, we asked all of our artists, and it comes out better sometimes from Shantani, but did you kind of come out of the womb playing <laughs> the piano? You know what I mean? Did, music. It, it, the music coming out. And I know you got a family history, so I'm going to let you just start it right. and give us that family history background. And we're just going to do it tonight. Stay tuned, everyone. We're on Roku, Facebook, YouTube channel, and anywhere where you find your podcast, you will see this great interview with great music, so you can put it in your Spotify. 
only here on We Love Red Grooves. Please subscribe to all of our platforms today. So take it away, Mr. Lonnie Listen Smith. It's all about you, man. Oh, yeah, Cliff. Um, that is amazing because uh, in a way, I guess we did come out of the room playing music of my father. It was just music in the house, you know, 24 seven. Because my father was a member of the Harmonizing Four Gospel Group. No, and get out of here. Mm-hmm. So, you know, so when I was a little kid, you know, they, they had gospel festivals. And uh, so my father, they were in Richmond, Virginia. Okay. And so they had a festival every year. And, and you know, Dixie Hummingbirds would come in town. Uh, Sam Cook, the Soul Sarahs. Oh, wow. Uh, mm-hmm. So, you wow. know, I mean, Shoot, I, I met all of them. You know, I was just running around backstage. And, you know, even Sister Rosanna Thorpe. Rosanna, uh, you seen Sister Rosanna Thorpe? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. man, you, you kidding? She fell in love with her when I was before, and she moved to Richmond for a while. Really? And, and it was amazing because, you know, you hear her playing that guitar, and I said, wow, you know, she's doing something different. And, you, you know, I just took it for granted. I'm a little kid. Right. But then years later, when I went to London, at, you know, after you know, expansions came out, all the all the rock groups in, in London was talking about her called her the, you know, the godmother of rock and roll and yes. stuff like that. Yes. But when I was a little kid, I met I met all the gospel people and then of course then you know you you go from there and you get into uh the doo wop and then the blues and and then I finally you know, finally got to high school and I heard I was over one of my friends' house and his father was into jazz and he played a record by Charlie Parker called Just Friends mm-hmm. and with strings. And when I heard that, I said, oh man, what is that? And, and they said, well, he's playing jazz and improvisation. I said, well, that's what I want to do. Because I mean, he just sounded so beautiful. It was fantastic. So tell me this, since it's a musical family, I'm gonna start off with the the family yourself, like your dad. Who was the influence on your dad? And then we'll go into some of the early influences on you. But who would you say was an early influence on your dad? And that's interesting because because uh, my father had a beautiful tenor voice, mm-hmm. and and he played the four string guitar. And so I, I it's hard to say who influenced, but he was always in, in in gospel music. Okay. And actually, I had two younger brothers. They inherited my father's beautiful tenor voice. Mm-hmm. I can only see the bass part. And the middle brother, Ray Smith, he had a big hit record. Uh, he formed a group called the Jamels. Mm-hmm. And they had a big hit record called A Little Bit of Soap. And then, then you heard my younger brother, uh, Donald, sing on most of my records. So they, they, all, they both got that beautiful tenor voice. And, and that was... Um, so my father, you know, he was always in in, in, in the gospel, and then when the album was before, they, they just took off and went all over the world. So now going back to high school, what was or at your home? What was the first instrument you picked up? Well, at the home, we, we had a piano. Okay. So whoever showed, whoever showed interest, we had an opportunity to you know start taking lessons. But you know, I wanted, I just wanted all music. So when I went to school. I was in the marching band. I was playing tuba, but back then they had that, uh, you know, that real tuba, that real heavy one. So, but I didn't care. I just wanted to be in the band. Right. Then I sang bass in the choir. Mm-hmm. So I, did, uh, so I sang bass in the, I mean, the choirs, played in the marching bands all the way from high, high school, even up to college. And so I just wanted to be music twenty four seven. So, given the fact that you went, and uh, we're bu- jumping a little ahead, but that you went to Morgan State, was the band had that soul back then that uh, that they do now, or you know, in the last twenty years? Oh, oh yeah, that was you know this. I was I, I was talking with some the marching bands in America uh, are fantastic because you know you know most of you are uh, creative musicians you know win these marching bands, and, and that that's a part of our history. And you know, and the drummers that come up with all these great rhythms, and of course, you know, you got all these beautiful young ladies dancing, and you know, you you, you can't beat that. That's that's a whole other, uh, a, you know, atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, what did you what did you study at Morgan? Did you take up music? Oh yeah, sure. Took up music, and 
like I said, was selling the piano, then singing bass in the choir, and playing in the marching band, and uh, and then you know, and also when I got to Mall, you know, which is in in Baltimore, mm -hmm. you know, I, I met Gary Barnes because he he lived in Baltimore, so Gary Barnes. we both were the same age, and right. so we started hanging out, and, and uh, so you know. Gary's father had a club called the Golf in Lounge. And then we, we used to perform there, so. Now, what was, you, you're Richmond. What was the music scene like in Richmond? Because every area had one. I mean, I'm, I'm from Pittsburgh. We had our uh, area, the Hill District, the Crawford Grill. If you came through Pittsburgh, yeah. you had to go through the Crawford Grill. What was the music scene like in Richmond? Where would you have to come play at when you were in Richmond? Uh, in Richmond, well, it, back then they had, uh, you know, all the, all the groups used to, all the, you know, Billy Eckstein, uh -huh. Sir Bono, used to do at the, at the Hippodrome Theater. Okay. The Hippodrome, it was in Richmond, Virginia, was like the Apollo in New York. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you had, um, Second Street, as they call it. And then you had North, uh, North, uh, I was the North End Lounge, uh, you know, a lot of groups that come through there. We 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 perform there, or then we did a lot of you know. Back then, we were doing a lot of dancing because it was a, we had the Metronome uh, All Star Band, mm -hmm. and so you you played for a lot of dancing uh, dancers. And um, so back then, Richmond had Hippodrome Theater, Second Street. You know, it was it was happening. So, so you 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 you. You're working for and behind a lot of people, working with a lot of different bands. What were you thinking ten years before you, you know, made your, uh, you know, your debut? What were you thinking about? What kind of style you'd have, you know? Uh, yeah, that, that's interesting. Well, what happened was, okay, I, I finished school, you know, finished finished Morgan State University, mm -hmm. and and I was, you know, heading to New York. So then when I get to New York, I'm doing a lot of freelancing. In the, in the beginning, there was a lot of singers, you know, Betty Carter, uh, Joe Williams, uh, mm -hmm. Dakota Staten. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, you, you're doing all these, and then, then your name get around, then you get, get the chance to uh, play with uh, Art Blakey and Jazz Messenger. Oh, wow. And at that time, Chuck Mangione was, was in the band. Did not know. Uh, so then yeah. after Art, you know, I, I got with uh, you know Max Roach, and 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 each each one was a, was a great experience. Cause Art was Art played one way, then Max played another way, and then at, at that time, uh, Abby Lincoln was was in the band. Wow. Really, Abby Lincoln? Man, Abby. Man, that's right. right. Cause you know, right. her Max was hard. Man. So uh, and actually, they they finally found the recording of. Uh, of me playing with Max Roach and Apple Lincoln at, at Newport Jazz Festival. Oh, wow. So that's, really? that's out. That's on YouTube. And uh, I, didn't, I didn't see that one. I would have definitely pulled that one up. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah that I was it. They finally down. got it. Okay. And then, uh, then after Max, you know, uh, I met Farrell. And that was, that was interesting. You know, because uh, that was just a very organic experience. And then, you know, we heard Leon Thomas hit Joe Ling. Mm -hmm. I said, oh. So the, all of us were doing something different on our instruments, and well, do, do, it just worked. Do me a favor and well, expand on interesting, okay? I love when people say things like that. That <laughs> right. was interesting. Give me some more on that, okay? <laughs> you said it was interesting with yeah. Farrell him? Yeah, oh. you, you described, you said what been playing with him was interesting, okay? Oh, oh, oh yeah, you know, with, with, with Farrell, I mean, it's, that's, that's how we met, because Farrell was, sound like he was, playing more than one note on a saxophone and you know right. that's impossible but he was getting all these different sounds and i was trying to get at that time the only thing i played was the grand piano okay so i was trying to get more sound out of the grand piano mm -hmm. then like i said we hear heard uh leon thomas yoda man and i said wow all of us are doing doing something different and and then when we got together it, it just worked I mean, we didn't even have to do that much rehearsal because what we were trying to do was expand the music as, as, and, as, as far as you can go. And and I, I asked to tell Farrell, I said, well, Farrell, we have to, you know, we can take the music all the way out 
and and at least let's just bring it back, you know, where we started, and and because you can't leave the people out there in space. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, you know, and, and it worked because when the record Karma came out, it just took off worldwide. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take everyone on a music journey, but. By you being here with us tonight and so excited and that musical journey starting almost 50, 60 years ago and still releasing new music today. And what we're gonna introduce first tonight is something that you did with the ensemble with Adrian Young and Ali Shaheed with what they call Jazz is Dead, but they take all you artists and bring out new music. And this has just been released on fr this past Friday, if I'm correct. For Jazz, I'm Dead, album number 17 that they put out. We're going to introduce the song that you recorded with them that's called Dawn, and then we're going to go back and take you on a musical journey, and we're going to come back and share some of those stories with the music. So please tune in to our YouTube channel, Roku channel. Also, we're on Facebook, Instagram, wherever you find your podcast. Please subscribe to We Love Rare Grooves. We have in the house the legendary, the one and only Mr. Lonnie yeah. Liston-Smith. Yeah. Yes, indeed. And yeah, this is yeah. a brand new release. This past Friday, Jazz is Dead with the release from Mr. Lonnie Liston Smith called Dawn. DJ Cameosis, take me away.
just like you do. Some drink while others live. Some taste while others embrace. When you can't get to the vineyard, bring the vineyard home to you. Bell Navis. Welcome back to the Groove Studios. That's right. We are in the house with the fusion tonight. And with some, so, with some bass voice on that last right. commercial. Okay. <laughs> hey, we are in the house with Bell Navis. That's right. <laughs> BellNavisWineAndSpirits.com. Go to the site today. Tell them. Just leave a message that you heard it on We Love Rare Grooves. Get you a bottle. Like I said, I will give you your money back if you don't like this. Because it's 93 out of 100. You know, from Guaranteed Somali. good. Guaranteed good. Guaranteed good. Bell Navis, Wine and Spirits. 
Christian Bell Navis, my man. So as we do here, we're back in the studios with the legendary Lonnie Liston Smith. You still with us, my good man, playing that great music. Oh. <laughs> Did you yeah, see right here? Hey, you see, we went six decades right there, from 2013 and probably back to 1963, when we started off um, introducing Mr. Roland Kirk. Roshan Roland Roshan Kirk. Roshan Roland Kirk. Absolutely. Tell us about working with him, because this is before you started your own band. And oh. um, I think he had a, a music release party with Martin Luther King and uh, Robert, they were listening to the, the release party with Ro you and Roland, uh, Roland Clerk there. Yeah, I'm not going <laughs> yeah. for that. <laughs> yeah, well, we, well, that was the first time I recorded. Actually, before that, we did uh, Here Comes the Whistle Man. Right. That was, okay. the, that was the first record. And and then we did uh, this last one, Please Don't Cry Beautiful Edith. Uh, cause that was, and that was at the Van Gelder studio. And you know, working with Ross Sound was interesting because, you know, he played three horns mm -hmm. simultaneously, yeah. and he and he could do it. Oh, and he, he also had a nose flute. You know, he would he would do that every now and then. And uh, so that, you know, that was that, that was that was a good experience. And I, I remember that you always talk about New Orleans earlier. Uh, he went to New Orleans when we were off, so he went down there by himself, hanging out. Uh huh. And so, so when he came back, yeah, some that all he was yeah, some play that clarinet because he, he heard the clarinet then in New Orleans, and uh, so we, you know, he for a whole week he just played the clarinet. So it was, you know, each, each artist you, you perform with, they they're different, but but they're all you know very talented. So that's that's what counts. So he had a gentleman singing too. I don't think we played that wrong. Was it Al Hebler? What was that song we? It was on the first one, but then we went to Farrell Saunders. Uh, the creator has a master plan. Tell us about your, your collaborations with Mr. Farrell Saunders as I pluck here with the oh. kalimba. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, oh, yeah, I, I see you have your kalimba. I got my you kalimba know, from Africa. That's, oh, oh, sure, that's great. You got, a, you got a real nice one. And so what happened, you know, we, we did that record because uh, Bob Deal, you know, produced produced all the records, the earlier records with Farrell, and you know, so we, uh, you know, Bob did Coltrane, John Coltrane records also. Mm -hmm. So we 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 did Karma, and but then the thing thing with Farrell and every, every recordings, uh, you never knew because sometimes he would invite musicians that that weren't in the group, mm -hmm. so. But you know, they're every, everyone's a talented, and so it worked. But you know, so you get to the studio sometimes, and you say, "Oh, well, we see all these you know, new faces." But then we did the record karma, and when it came out, that 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 record just took off real wide, and, and then we started doing a lot of touring, and so and then a lot of times, you know, I, I would play the only thing I played with the grand piano, mm -hmm. but then I would sometimes stand up and play percussion. And then sometimes, you know, we'd be making, uh, playing the Columba and making different sounds. Because Columba really is, is nothing but a, a small, small keyboard. Or, mm -hmm. or, you know, because it has the little things you pluck instead right. of pu pushing the keys down. And um, so, and then, you know, we, we always, everyone sometimes, because Farrell was, when he wasn't playing the saxophone, he's, he's all there playing percussion. And, you know, we were, um, you know, in New York, you know, it's, there was a place in, in Brooklyn called the East, mm -hmm. and a lot of people. I wish I wish they had video back then, because that was a very unique place. Because we would play at the East, and you know, they would serve beautiful vegetarian food and mm -hmm. very, you know, culturally uh, together. But when you played the East, you had to really be be ready to perform because okay. the audience would bring their own percussion. Okay. Really? So you would start playing and all of a sudden you got all these percussion players <laughs> and, and and oh that's that's a lot of energy. And so that that was, you know, all these I guess back in the seventies it was it was really very, very creative time, you know, in our in our history. Mm-hmm. 
And so we had one more before we get into when you started the Cosmic Echoes. You played with Stanley Turrentine. Tell us about that. We played the Sugar from 71, I believe. Oh, yeah, but that was, uh, I think that was one of Stanley's big, uh, biggest hits. Uh, and so we, and that was, again, we were back at Van Gelder's studio, you know, all those uh, great records that he did with uh, recorded with Blue Note and Train, everyone. And so, you know, we just go in the studio and and you, you go over the song. Shoot, and, and, you know, on that record, I think Freddie, Freddie Hubbard, Ron Carter, and I forget who was playing drums, but, uh, you know, I mean, that was, I mean, that's really I, I dealing with a lot of great extreme talent. So we did that and we played Sugar and, and like I said, we did Sugar and it just, it just really became one of uh, Stanley's yeah. biggest hits. And then actually, they, uh, we had, uh, they started back then, it was called the Jazz All Stars or Superstars of Jazz. Oh, really? And then we went on tour, I guess it was Roy S, Stanley Turrentine, Gene Kahn, oh, Bobby right. Humphrey, myself, and... Uh, man, that's a hell of a lineup right there. Right there, yeah. I remember Oh, man, man we, we sold out all those shows. You know, the, the boxing promoter promoted all those shows. Uh, and he, uh, you know, he won the top black bo bo uh, boxing yeah, promoters today. You talking about uh, Don? You talking about Don? Uh, Don, uh, was Don King. Don, Don, Don King. King. Yeah. Oh, not Don King. The uh, the one. Uh, he's L. after L. Don King. I know who you talking about. Butch. Is it Butch? Not Butch, but the other other one. Al oh, Heyman. He, he, he really blew up. Al huh? Heyman. Al Heyman. That's it. Al, Al Heyman. Heyman. Okay. And back then, he was, he was a music. He was a music promoter. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Al out of and, Cleveland. Yeah, yeah, out of Cleveland. Yep. All of them crooks out of Cleveland. <laughs> so, you know, that was it. He produced that. We, we sold out about 40, 50, 50 cities. And now, tell us about the story of Miles Davis. As you always played, like you said, the organs, but how did you get introduced to Fender Rhodes and that story with Miles Davis when he wanted you to come over and record? Oh, yeah. Well, we, um, we know I always played a grand piano because mm -hmm. I, I never did kind of mess with the organ, but. Um, so I played the grand piano and then, like I said, uh, I discovered the Fender Rose when they did the last record with Farrell called Thimby. And I wrote, mm. that's what's traveling right there in the studio. Yeah, First yeah. time I tested Fender Rose. Mm. So after that, I get the call to do, to go, to go down miles. Was, I think he was doing it on the corner. Mm -hmm. so I, I get to the studio and, uh, I see three keyboards. And I, so I, I'm, I'm assuming uh, I got to wait my turn. <laughs> so Miles, you know, he's very candid. He walks over, you know, with the bleep you're waiting for. And so I saw Herbie Hancock and another pianist. So he wanted all of us to play at the same time. And uh, so I, I, I did. I, you got to really listen because you can't play with the other, with the other <laughs> keyboardists that's playing. Right. And we did it on the corner, and, and I think another one. And then I get the call to to go on, you know, to go on tour with, with Miles. So I'm I'm all excited. I said, oh now I'm gonna really get into Defender Rose. To me, it was brand new. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I get to Miles house and uh, I'm looking for Defender Rose. I said, I don't see it. So and that's so Miles tells me I'm tired of Defender Rose. I mean, because you know, <laughs> Herbie played it for Herbie Hancock, Joe Zavanu, Chicken Rib, they all played Defender Rose uh -huh. with my. So I said, oh no. So then he said, I want you to play that instrument. And the Japanese had just given him uh, a brand new Yamaha organ with a, with a lot of organ sounds, different sounds, but it was, it was a keyboard, not uh -huh. like Jimmy Smith organ. So he said, Miles, Miles, I want you to play that. I, I want that sound. I want a different sound. So I said, well, Miles, okay, I never played that. He said, oh, that's great. I said, well, Miles, can I take it home and practice? <laughs> I said, can I take it home and practice? Like, he said, no, you, 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 you get it. You know, you're talented. You figure it out on the... So I, I had to... Because Miles wants you to create every night. I mean, he, you know, he played with, what, Charlie Parker, everyone. He wanted, you know, some real music. Right. So I, I had to go on stage and I'm learning the instrument, creating and improvising. Also, I mean, it was, it, it was 
spontaneous with me because I'm it's all brand new and uh so you know being being with Miles man that's that's if you notice everyone that left Miles Davis group uh-huh. formed their own group. Because mm-hmm. well, Miles Miles made made you stronger. It's always always a great musical challenge. I'm thinking that one of the things you can use is your tagline, creating every night, okay? Right. <laughs> ah, <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> creating. You know, yeah, you know right. that's interesting because Miles is serious about that. You know, a lot of mm. groups, they, they're not serious about creating. We don't want, want the musicians to create every night, but mm. Miles, he was serious about that. Yeah, no, that's good. They'll tell me this, with all that blend and talent, how did you come up with the cosmic echoes in that 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 color uh, of music uh, and the sound of music, and now I got the cosmic echoes. Well, you know that's what I'm saying. The '70s was was really unique, mm-hmm. creative uh, time for you know for all of us uh, that were that were back there. And because you know we we were doing all kinds of studying, you were studying all different kinds of philosophies, all kinds of uh, religion religions, mm-hmm. and. So I, I, I wanted to, you know, let the world know that, you know, we all, I don't care what, what religion, what philosophy, everyone really is seeking peace and harmony. Yes. And so so I was trying to get this universal sound, because music is a universal language. Mm-hmm. And people speak different languages verbally, but they automatically, when the music starts, Everyone understands, it, but you can't speak to each other verbally. But mm-hmm. everyone understands the music, so I was trying to come with universal sound. And when I got to expansions, I remember Miles. I used to watch Miles on stage because Miles would have all these pedals hooked up to his trumpet, mm-hmm. and I'd only seen the pedals hooked up to uh, guitar players. Okay. And so I said, "Well, that one that Miles can hook the pedals up to his trumpet." I want to kind of hook these, all these pedals up to the Fender Rose. Mm-hmm. And when I did that, I came up with it, it all worked. And, and it came, I guess, with that cosmic sound. And then I was studying, and they say every all the sounds that we are, that we hear are reflection of the cosmos. I said, oh, the cosmic echoes. So wow. that was okay. Mm-hmm. Right. And that that's you know, it was you know, to try and try trying to enlighten, you know, the world and so we can stop all this crazy fighting and wars and everything. And, but but as you can tell right now, that's easier said than done. Yes, it is. But, you know, the one thing I always think about when I think about you is that in addition, obviously, mm-hmm. being a musician's musician, um, that you're an intellectual, you know, that you always had some insightful kinds of things. Tell us about that. What the genesis of that? Oh, um, well, it's... Uh, like, like I said, I, I just want, I was trying to, music heals people, and mm-hmm. uh, so I, I wanted um, to try to spread some positive knowledge through the music, and you know, because people, we had, that's why I started writing lyrics on expansion, because you, you know, you grew up and people sing the blues, my baby left me, or mm-hmm. I have a heartache and all that stuff, drinking in your beer, and I said, no, let's Let's give people something positive living. Expand your mind so you can have a, everyone can have a vision of a new world where we have this universal peace and harmony. And, and so I was trying to you know, express all that through the music. This is like the song you, you played, I uh, heard earlier, called Beautiful Woman. Mm-hmm. And, you know, even today, you know, we, we got all this difficulties between men and women. But, you know, we, men and women, we, we all got the same problem. And, you know, and, and, and all of us are crazy at times. We can bail off you now. Yeah. So I, I wrote that song, Beautiful Woman, Why Are We Fighting? Let's get together, you know, and build a brand new world, you know. So um, so that, that's what I was trying to, trying to, you know, always trying to do through music. So with saying that, man, we're going to go into another musical segment, and then we're going to come back and talk about some of the uh, earlier songs that you had from the first albums, and I want to talk about the Kufi, the different type of Kufi hats you had about that, that religious experience, and how that all blended together, man, and some of the art, other artists that you performed okay. with. So now we can ready to go into some more music. Please tune in to our World Coup channel, 
Facebook Live right now, YouTube channel. Please subscribe to all our musical platforms here on We Love Rare Grooves. Let us know how you feel about the program, what artists you would like us to bring to the show. We go, we, we do it, right? We've got Lonnie Liston Smith for you tonight, playing his music, sharing his history, only as we do on We Love Rare Grooves. I'm your host, C. Mose, over here with the consultant, Rob Ray. And we got DJ Cameosis in the house tonight Absolutely. here. Brought to you by Bell Navis Wines and Spirits. That's right, Bell Navis gets your bottle today here at the Tiny Room Studios. DJ Cameosis, take us away. We got a little bit of some love beams by Mr. Lonnie Liston Smith.
Business? Look no further. Spin it PR Media is at your service. Need to expand the brand, bring brand awareness, or need a connection that'll change your life? Don't just stand there. Spin it PR Media. Ready to take. Welcome back to We Love Rare Grooves in the Groove Studios, coming from you to the Tiny Room Studios right here in Los Angeles, California. Hey, if you need a place to record, this is the place to come to. Julian, Corey, Greg, they'll take care of you. Only here at the Tiny Room Studios. We're back with We Love Rare Grooves with the one and only, the legendary, my main man, Mr. Lonnie Liston Smith. You part of the Groove family right now, baby. You part of the Groove family. We wanted to share your music tonight. What you think, DJ Cameo? Is she doing her thing there, Mr. Smith? Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. I mean, it's a lot of these songs I haven't heard in a long time, so it, it, this is great. That, that that's what we wanted to do, man. Draw the memories, yeah, bring it you. back. Can you remember the first time you heard your song on the radio? Do you remember where you were? Uh, let me see. I, I'm assuming. I guess the main thing that you really heard on the radio a lot was uh, was expansions. Okay. Because back then in New York, I mean, you should you 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 even had a uh, you know you had a great great jazz station. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, back you know seventy New, New, New York was really New York, mm -hmm. and you know, all these great radio stations. But you know, they, they seem like they all they're all gone now. But uh, so you know, you, I just heard expansions, and it, that was that was fantastic. Was it? It just blew up from there. So tell us, in the early days, when did you put your first band together? What was that collaboration like? And then the second question, which I can really ask, is recording then. And you're recording now. What were some of the differences? Oh, yeah. Well, back then, okay, 
the first record I did on my own, I, I was still with Miles. Okay. So, and so we were off. So Bob Field said, you know, Lonnie, you know, your name is really getting out there. You can do your own record. And so I said, okay, well, I said, well, I'm going to call it As for Traveling. And actually, I had him, Tume was playing Kungas, and I had oh, wow. Roy was playing the Tabla. So if we all went to, with Miles. And uh, of course, Season Like B, you know, great bassist. Um, was playing bass, and so we we did uh, Astro Traveling, and then I went back with Miles, and because I, I wanted to stay with Miles for a while, but then Bob Field called me, you know, months and months later, said, "Well, the record, we, we're releasing the record, but now you got to put a band together." Mm -hmm. I said, "Oh, wow!" So you mean I got to leave Miles? And uh, he said, "Well, that's that's the music business." So okay, I had to put a band together, and. Um, and you know, start traveling, supporting the record as we're traveling, and then the next one was Cosmic Funk, and then when we did expansions. I mean, you really, uh, even the people at RCA Records called me, and when expansions came out, it just blew up. And then go back and print all kinds of uh, more records and everything, and so, and you know. You know, it's, it's you know it's interesting because you know we we be so wrapped up in the music, mm -hmm. you're really not aware of uh, the, the business. business. You learn man. you learn about the business the hard way, and so they said, "Well, oh man, you you on the charts," and I'm so naive back. You know, I said, "I'm on the Billboard charts," and I wasn't aware of that. And you got to get a manager, mm -hmm. you know, lawyers, and so uh, you know, it's being a side man. It's it's, it's real easy. And you know, all you gotta do is worry about yourself, you know, and, and be on time, and that's that's it. But then when you become take that next step, you know, to be a leader, that's a lot of responsibility. You know, you got concerns with everyone in the band and everything else going on around you, and and then you still got to uh, go on stage and perform and be creative and play some yeah. beautiful music so, so you know it's, it's a learning experience what's what's saying that what was some of the best advice you say you received during that time uh best advice um i guess what they told me you know you it, start learn, learning you learn learning about the business because they say you have to get a manager and you have to get, get, get you a good lawyer and, and you and you and you hope they, they, they they're really looking out for you and and you just just by being with Miles, watching Miles, Miles was such a genius on stage and off stage, you know, and right. off stage and on stage. So, so you know, just kind of watching him, that, that's what I enjoyed because I knew he was a musical genius. That was obvious, but just to watch him, you know, Man, deal with things on stage and off stage, and so you know, you just you learned a lot. As I said, when you. And you left Miles, you formed your own group, but you just all you do is watch him and you hang out with him, and he, he picks up a lot of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Mm -hmm. So, what, what, on the same line of the question that uh, Clifton just asked you, what would you tell a young Lonnie Liston Smith now that would have helped him in his development in whatever that is? Oh, right. Um, well, like I said, we, we all learn about the business the hard way, so learn as much as you can about, you know, the, the art of music is first, mm -hmm. but, you know, you, you got to learn about the business, you know, uh, try to find you a great lawyer or manager or uh, agent to, to represent you, and, you know, you, you learn learn about publishing, and, and so it just... just because we, we, we get so wrapped up in being creative and, and get so wrapped up in the music because you love it so much mm -hmm. uh, and you, you're not aware. But, you know, so just learn, learn your craft and, and, and get some knowledge of, of how the business part of uh, music, music works. Because right. I guess right. someone said right. once, that's why they say show business. business. So, you right, know, the business side. Tell us this, you traveled all around the world. Where did you enjoy traveling and playing most? Um, well, it is, well, you know, Japan and all these places are great because they, they really into the music. 
But I guess London, because when expansions came came out and I mean it it just blew up in in uh, in the UK. And when I got there in the seventies, uh, they said Lonnie Listen Smith, you the Godfather of jazz fusion funk. And then I saw little kids. 12 wow. all the way up to 100 just dancing to expansions and so that that kind of that, 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 that really you know, i never forgot that experience I think because with, with what i wanted to do uh you know because you know we all were, grew up listening to james brown you yes. know yeah you, 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 man, you couldn't escape that <laughs> right I mean, what he made down so what i did was you you, you want to put put that groove on the bottom put some positive lyrics and then in the jazz improvisation, you're still doing the improvisation on top of all that. And so the people can can dance to it. And they're still still hearing the improvisation and and that that's and, and it all worked. So tell us an intriguing story during that time that, that our listeners would love to know about you. You know, during, uh, during that time? Yes. Uh well, see, it's hard to say intriguing stories. Uh Hmm, I, I'm trying to think of something. I guess just traveling, traveling the world. Um, so where have you, tell us this, where have you not gone that you would love to have, have played it? Have you been to Africa? Oh yeah, I, 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 well, I only went to some parts of Africa. They had a big a festival in, um, in South Africa. Okay. And uh, Johannesburg, I think they have it every year. Mm-hmm. So that was, that was a good experience, but I, I didn't realize <laughs> Johannesburg was that far. I'm assuming I'm, you know, I've you, know been you, there. you go to Europe six, seven hours. Right. I didn't realize Johannesburg was that far, but you know, it's, it's it's nice. You get there, and then you 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 see all these, meet all these different people, and they all speak from you know different languages from different tribes, but at least everyone speaks English. So uh, okay. That, that that was a good experience and to to be talking to the people and they come from different tribes and so that was that was very interesting well what we're going to do now is go into another musical segment we're going to talk come back and talk about the publishing rights how you feel about people sampling your music did you have your masters but these are some artists that you may have may not known that sampled your music mm-hmm. and it's all over the world And this is what you've left for the music industry, especially when these young cats come in and listen and produce and find these things in the crate. So DJ Cameosis has put something together tonight Mm -hmm. that she's going to play some of the originals and see who sampled it. And we're going to come back and make sure you got your receipts from them. Yeah, (laughs) and and, 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 and let me ask one more thing uh, that you think about on the backside. And I want you to talk about that bottom. You were talking about James Brown's bottom and how you incorporated that funk into your oh, music. Holy okay. Shout out. All right. <laughs> DJ Cameos is what you got. Stay. 
Rip, treacherous, all the etceteras To the death of us, me and my confidants You shine, you feel the ambiance Y'all niggas just rhyme Body ounce though accumulates like snow We don't just shine, we illuminate the whole show You feel me? Factions from the other side would love to kill me Spill three quarts of my blood into the street Let alone the heat Fuck em. we hate a nigga loving his life In all possible ways, know the feds is bugging my life Hospital days, reflecting when my man laid up On the uptown high block, he got his side sprayed up I saw his
Welcome back to the Groove Studios, as we only do here on We Love Red Grooves. Go ahead, DJ Cameosis. You put it down, girl. Yeah, Give it up. I'm tired of you. Give it up. My girl put it down. And Lonnie, well, you this, Lonnie. What you got to say about this is her yes. debut here, um, Mr. Smith. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. You like yeah, how she mixed she, That last one, I'm, I'm not familiar with that at all. The last sample. From, wow. That was from Karen Wheeler from the UK that used to be with um, Karen sang a little bit with Loose Ends. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. I, okay, I gotta look that up. Karen Wheeler. Oh, what's uh, the name of it? Uh, blue. Blue is the color of pain. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll email, oh, oh, right, right, right. Okay. I'll that email was... you the playlist um, after the show. I'll make sure you get it so you can look at what we okay. sample. Perfect. So, All right. so, so, like, so the reality is that your music will live forever. Okay, and so this is just this generation. So tell us about it. Tell us about your thoughts about uh, some of the songs that you heard earlier. Um, the other samples? Yes. Uh -huh. That was, um, oh man, are you, of course, uh, Jay Z and, and Dead President. That, that, that's, that really started it. And they said that, uh, that was one of Jay Z, you know, Jay, Jay Z's, uh, Big ones, dear presidents. Did but you then get the I, from it? Did I, they, I, I, don't, I don't know if she played that one, but then I heard I think it's Murray J. Blige. Yes. Uh, when they when she sampled uh God in the Peace and Take Me As I Am. I mean that was fantastic Receipts. because the arrangement, the video, everything was, was first class. And some of the samples I think I might I'm I one might of, not be aware of because they sound like from overseas. Right. One was a, a French young man, Le Fournier, featuring Amir Béton, Toulé Pour LL. Okay. Yeah, but it, that's, that oh. was the thing because when I was in the studio, that was years ago when I did uh, play The Garden of Peace and I told Bob Dylan, I just wanted to play something very beautiful. Uh -huh. And so I played <laughs> Guard the piece on the grand piano. Uh -huh. Then I opened up Defend the Rose for some different colors right. and no drums, no bass. Mm -hmm. And in the younger generation now, they, they have discovered the Garden of Peace worldwide. And I, and I talked to the young kids. I said, why y'all y'all love Garden of Peace so much? And they said, well, it brings us so much peace and, and, and you know, and so that seemed like that's what I guess in these crazy times that's that's what they're looking for. All right, but the, the big question we asking: Did you get paid on all those things? Well, like I, I think well, a lot of people don't realize that a lot of them do mixtapes. But mm -hmm. you know, with, with Jay Z, their president, Murray J. Blige, take me as I am, and um, you know, you, you the, they 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 worked out okay because they were on major labels. But a lot of the young rappers might put out these mixtapes on their own, mm -hmm. and so. But you know, it's it's most of the samples you you have people listening and, and you know search things out, and they, or, or administrate the publishing and things like that. So, uh, so I, you know, it, it, it hasn't been too bad. But most of your songs you own because you were the writer and, and the producer of them, correct? So you own. Everything. I mean, do you have the masters also? Oh, to see, that's a good one. Uh, very, very few people ended up with the masters. Uh, I mean, because I mean, like you said, we really didn't know anything about masters. You know, I was very fortunate and blessed with Bob Thiel, but you know, he didn't try to mess with your publishing, and so. But a lot of the companies, even today, they, they're doing some crazy things. Now is that what is that with the Flying Dutchman? Right, Flying Dutchman. Dutchman. That, yeah, oh, that's, that's, that was it. And so, but you know, you you so I ended up, but the masters, you you just wasn't even aware, you never even heard of the word masters. And for, I think Ray Charles was one of the few artists that, that yeah. back then ended up with his masters. And he couldn't see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he got his masters. And then everybody well, else he saw see. with his ears. No, I, I understand that, but he saw with his ears. But I'm just saying, he yeah. was like you said, Mr. Smith, he's the only one that really got his masters. And you, he couldn't you're see. Right. The blind can he, see. Right. He was a smart man. That's right. right. Hey, that's a good one. And then, you know, even, even uh, Frank Sinatra didn't get his masters. So it's, uh, so, you know, 
But I, I think people are becoming, look, look, look what Prince had to go through yeah. or, or went through. Yeah. Right. Yes. And, yes. and even now that getting your master's back is, it can be real tricky. But you do have writing and publishing credits, a lot of right. for all your right, writing and publishing. So that's like I said, I was I was blessed and and, 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 and you know it all it all worked out in the end. Yeah. So tell us, who would you say is your top five uh, pianists, keyboardists with the fingers? Who would you say to? Oh, to, we, I, well, okay. I, I go back. You know, go back. I mean, look when you uh, man when when you listen to our Taylor. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness! Uh -huh. I mean, it's yeah. that's yeah. that's amazing. I mean, our Tatum almost played it all. Yeah. Then, then uh, so like all of us younger musicians, younger pianists, you know, we all we because I remember when I had a chance to meet Monk, hang out with Monk, and Monk was saying, you know, we all got to find our own sound because you know anybody can copy. Mm -hmm. So you you want to find your own sound. So when you people listen to it, they say. You listen to you say, oh, that's Miles playing, or that's Train playing, or that's, you know, but so that's that's what you want. That's your own sound. But so what I what I heard, I heard uh, Art Tatum, Art Tatum, then then I fell in love with Earl Gardner. Earl he came Gardner. up with a different sound. Okay. Then of course uh, Oscar Peterson, mm -hmm. uh, and you know it's it's and a lot of people don't don't realize, man, uh, Nat King Cole. Yeah, mm -hmm. he was a pianist. Yeah. He just happened to, he just happened to sing one night, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and and the rest is history. Okay, mm -hmm. but 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 Nat, Nat King Cole was was one of the top pianists. Uh, so you know it's you know I was I listened listen to all that. But my thing was, I was all in, I was always impressed with the horn players. Mm -hmm. You know, for some reason. So I guess I. Kind of approach the piano, uh, you know, a little bit different. Because uh, I'd be trying to, you know, because guess we're coming from a singing family, so I guess I'd be singing through the keyboard and or the piano, and and so that that's the way I kind of approach it. And okay. and you know, the horn players and guitar players, and everyone can bend notes, and it's hard on like on a grand piano. But I was always trying to do that, and so you know, you, you just. You just keep trying and keep trying to find that find that sound that you that you're hearing on your in, in your ears and on your inside. Okay. So what we're gonna do is another segment, and I think you're gonna appreciate this. It's called the Dusty of the Week. And the Dusty of the Week is when we go back into the crates, we go down into the groove graveyard, we go and challenge ourselves to find the music that people may not even know about and then we come up and bring it back. So we've done some great, some great honorees over the, I mean, people don't know how Cab Calloway's sister was very important, oh. like, right? We done played her music, you know? Um, Rosetta Thorpe we talked about. They've been our Dusty of the Week, but we are proud today. The Dusty of the Week is brought to you by Sweet Life SoCal Digital Magazine, and that is the magazine that you can get to know everything that's going on in Southern California. They're a sponsor of our Dusty of the Week, and the Dusty of the Week is going to be brought to you by Sweet Life. But our artists, you ready for this, Mr. Smith? Our artist for the Dusty of the Week is the Harmonizing Four. And we got this started off. They were established in 1927. They sing from a school function at Richmond, Virginia, Dunbar Elementary High School. And they start off with the founding members, Thomas Johnson and Levi Hansley, but then they added others. And no, one of them was Willie Payton, Joseph Williams, and then they added not only then your dad, Mr. Lonnie Liston Smith. Lonnie Smith here, so we're gonna show you the Dusty of the Week of the Harmonizing Four with your dad, and then we got a, a video presentation for you, and we'll come back and close out the show. Enjoy this from We Love Rare Grooves, the Dusty of the Week, the Harmonizing Four. You got something for me, Corey?
Switch every man in the group. The tighter the number, we'll crush them all. One by one. We've crossed it over. We are moving on again. Don't let it catch you. Oh, yeah. We are crossing over. We are moving on again. Don't let it catch you. Oh, yes, sir.
friend Learning is a better way Falling in love is a losing game hear this because it's so heavy and I thought wait a second but Phyllis this is your song mm -hmm. you wrote it with with something that reflects your life like living all alone my last album mm -hmm. was something I had experienced mm -hmm. someone left me then too and <laughs> when they brought me the song I said this is a lot of my songs are painful to people people say that there's a lot of pain in these songs and I don't think pain is bad for me or for anyone I think it's just a part of my life mm -hmm. along with the good things but I have a tendency to sing those songs and deliver those stories. But you say never again in the song. Never it's again for falling year. in love. Uh-uh. Have you? Well, <laughs> not the same way. I'm engaged now. I just got engaged uh -huh. um, a couple months ago. The way I feel about him and our relationship is much different than before. It's not the obsessive addictive thing. It's more of a a partnership it's a it's a it, the, the strongest caring i've ever felt for any man in my life but it's not the same sickness that i had before and I, i'm not so sure if all that stuff was not being in, in lust and some other kind of which i don't think is sick but i think lust is pretty neat but <laughs> mm, i think it's pretty cool but, we can write this song Lonnie. Let's, yeah, lust is one. pretty neat okay. <laughs> Welcome back to the Groove Studios with the one and only legendary Mr. Lonnie, Lonnie Liston Smith. Smith. Yes. We bow down. We yeah. honor Mr. Lonnie Liston Smith. How you doing, my good man? All right, all right. Yes, yes, you're right. Oh, shoot. I, I got to find that video. I'm not looking for I wasn't aware of that. 
<laughs> right. The, well, you know what? I'm going to send you the uh, video through uh, WeTransfer, so I'm going to send you a copy of the video. Yeah, and that's, okay. what, and that's what we try to do. We try to make sure that when you come on as an artist that you don't get pedestrian stuff with pedestrian questions, that we let you know that we know you and, 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 and want to honor you. Oh, I appreciate that, brother. Yeah, you. I, I, I give you credit. You are the cultural... Uh, what, the music. Well, I forget that next word. <laughs> <laughs> man, we, a couple of questions we have here from our audience. They were wanted to know, man, about the alpha, the, the hats and the chains. What's, what's some of the meaning? Give us that before we get out of here tonight. We oh, love the hats. We love well, the chains. Yeah. You got one on tonight. Right. Oh, yeah. Whatever. I, I guess that's my, my spiritual name. You know, uh, you know, you know, Yahuda. And so... What uh, what what they what they had, like I said, was sound and colors. So I would have these rhinestones, mm -hmm. and so you'd be playing. And when the lights, you know, you on stage, all these lights are on you, so the, the lights would hit hit the rhinestones, and they would shooting all these colors out into the audience at the same same time. The sound is going out, so you know, you was just just trying to be uh create a lot of beauty you know, for the audience, sound and colors. I remember that in college when they was hitting off, I was I was high as a kite and them lights was coming up, man, and I just didn't know what was going on. So it was the rhinestones in your hats at that time. I appreciate that. Oh, Never well, knew. right, that's great, that's great. I was, I was trying to do my part. <laughs> <laughs> to keep me high, right? <laughs> <laughs> you did your part with Clifton. <laughs> hey, man. We, we really appreciate your music. We're so privileged to have you come on and share the stories with us. I mean, this is only really part one because we got some more music that we can share from uh, the other times I know from the 80s and 90s and some other things. So you're welcome to come back for part two. Can we have you come back for a part two? Okay, well, let me let me take a break. I mean, you know, shoot. What, it's, not tonight. It's no, not tonight. tonight. No, another, another, another time. Not tonight. I got to let you go ahead and see the end of the lake again. I, he said, let me take a break. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother. My man, you know, I ain't go, I, I got you long enough right now. It's, it's 1130. I know the wife got the milk and, and cookies ready for you to come upstairs and finish watching the game, man. But hey, okay. it's All been right. okay. you part of the group. I hope the Lakers win there. I, I don't want to be disappointed. You. Don't don't tell me we both got it taped. So let's let's not talk about who's winning yet. You know, folks. All right, play. okay. All right, because I know you've been taking a look at it, but that's fine. Hey, like I said before, man, we're honored to give you your flowers now from the team here on We Love Red Grooves, from everyone in the studio, from our sponsors at Bell Neighbors Wine and Spirits. The, little, the tiny room studios from Corey, uh, Max Julian from the team here, the consultant, Cameosis, and myself. We want to give you the We Love Rare Grooves Award, man, for being part of our show and put this on it. As our girl Shantani said, don't use it as a paperweight. So oh. I just get, yeah, there you go. We almost got it. I think you got it, right? There we go. Hold it up there. There we go, Mr. Lonnie Liston Smith, man. Thank you so much, man, for taking the time out to let us share your music, your story, the legend. And this is how we're going to give you your flowers tonight, man. So thank you so and, much. And Cliff, let me just say, uh, Lonnie, if you could do one more thing, eventually you need to just do your concert, even if it's in your home city and call yeah. it memories, okay? Because yeah. oh, you yes. have created, you have a story, bro. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, oh, I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank Do you. I need to come to Richmond and put a show on? Yep, we have a uh, show. All right, well, just, like I said, let me, I'm right now kind of playing everything by ear. But you, know, but you and I always talk, so we'll see okay. what happens. We'll see what happens. We'll talk. Yeah. Okay, because if I have to come to Richmond and, and get the venue and everything, I, we, we take care of it. Big Red, my office is 9 to 5. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> hey, we're not going to keep you any longer. Lonnie Liston Smith, the legend. And that's where you find the legends at on here on We Love Rare Grooves. Man, we appreciate the love that you gave us tonight and sharing the story. We'll talk again. We'll get a part two. Um, you keep it going, man. Keep those fingers magic. Keep that music magic, okay? All right, brother. Pleasure. All right, brother. Our pleasure, man. Our pleasure. God bless you. All Be right. safe. We'll All talk right, soon. Man. 
Hey, we want to thank our listening audience all over the globe. Please enjoy our music. I mean, our show with the music. Subscribe. Always got to subscribe to our YouTube channel, our Roku channel, Facebook, Instagram, and wherever you find your podcast, you will find We Love Red Grooves. We give you the legends. We give you the music. We give you the artists. Hey, we also take care of you on your Spotify. DJ Cameosis, she did it tonight. I'm sure you found something that you would love to put in your Spotify playlist. Yeah. We want to thank Bell Navis Wine and Spirits to keep the show going every Tuesday night. You got to go to www.navis and Sp yeah, Bell Navis Spirits. That's right. Go ahead, girl. Talk to me now. Talk to me. Get it there. It's a great drink, only as yeah. we do here on We Love Rare Grooves. The consultant in the house, he got a new. Uh, name tag there. I can't put it Music together. Music cultural anthropologist. Thank there you very you much. I'm not going to try that again tonight. And the Tiny Room Studios, like we said, if you need to record, you need to, a great place to come and record. It's yeah. here at the Tiny Room. Just give us a call at We Love Rare Grooves and, and we'll and, get you in and, touch with Julian. And Cliff, you know what it is. Yes. We're doing big things at the, in the, the tiny, tiny room. room. We're right. doing big, big things, big things in, the tiny in, the tiny room. Room. in the tiny room. So please join us every Tuesday as we'll be back next week. Uh, brought to you by I don't know who we'll have next week, but we will be here next week here on We Love Rare Grooves. But coming up, we got some great guests. We got a number one art. He's going to be number one when he come on, right? From the UK. Is that to Kim? When we have him come on, he's going to be number one at that time. So we have some great artists coming up. So please stay with us on We, we Love Rare, Rare Groove. Yabba dabba do. Do your thing, baby. Yes. You did it tonight. You did it tonight, dude. Bam.